A jobs guarantee is a proposed policy where federal funds would be freed up to guarantee a job to all people who are willing to work. The current system means there are many individuals who are involuntarily unemployed, that is, they can't find a job, despite wanting one. A jobs guarantee is a proposed way to combat this involuntary joblessness. It does not force people to work. It is not a work for the dole scheme. It allows everyone to have a job if they want one, and offers extra hours to those who can't find full-time work. The funds would be assigned to individual communities to be used as they see fit, on projects that would best help that local community. So what are the benefits of such a proposal? Well, firstly, everyone would be employed if they wanted to be. This would guarantee them an income, albeit the minimum wage, but an income nonetheless. Some commenters have argued that this wage must be a socially inclusive minimum wage. That is, it gives people enough money to pay for the necessities in life – food, shelter, electricity, and so on – as well as a little bit extra so that they can go out with friends for a cup of coffee, or go to the movies, or whatever. For those people unable to work, for example people with disabilities that prevent them from participating, or the elderly, or the infirm, they would still have access to a publicly funded pension. Welfare wouldn't disappear, but would only be available to those who truly need it. It's not clear how certain members of society would be treated under a jobs guarantee. For example, full-time single mothers – that is, mothers that have young children at home, but no husband or partner to help them. Would the mother be expected to work under the jobs guarantee and put her children in daycare? Or would she already be considered working at home, raising her children, and therefore guaranteed the socially inclusive minimum wage? It's a tough question to answer. If a single mother is guaranteed an income by staying at home, then surely a mother with a husband would also be guaranteed an income by staying at home and looking after her children. Do volunteer jobs count as jobs? And if so, are volunteers entitled to receive the income from a jobs guarantee? If not, will this stop large numbers of people from volunteering in favour of a guaranteed income? To be fair, proponents state that the jobs guarantee would certainly be linked with local non-profit organisations and charity groups, so perhaps volunteers would fall under this category. Another benefit of a jobs guarantee is that it would improve pay and conditions for all workers. That is, workers that are currently stuck in dead-end jobs or underpaid jobs will now have the power to move into a government-run jobs guarantee program. This will force private employers to compete with the government for employees. Their workers will be able to demand adequate pay and more generous benefits without fear of being fired. For this reason alone, the jobs guarantee is sounding pretty good to the average low-paid worker. Currently in Australia, there are many workers who are being paid less than minimum wage. Often they are international students or recent migrants who have little power to find a better job, and are often scared to report their employer to the relevant authorities. They'd rather have any job, albeit a very low-paying job, than to have no income. A jobs guarantee would benefit them greatly. No more will dodgy employers be able to cheat their workers out of a decent pay packet. So what are the potential issues with the jobs guarantee? Well first of all, there's the cost. The government will have to find enough money to implement such a scheme. Some of the money will come from existing welfare that will no longer be needed, for example unemployment benefits. If people choose to be unemployed in a jobs guarantee environment, then I presume they will not get an income. But of course, programs like these are notoriously underfunded, resulting in more issues than they solve. What if people aren't being supervised correctly due to a lack of funds and end up making mistakes, or heaven forbid, injuring themselves or others? Another problem is the types of jobs being offered. I'm worried that some communities will simply create bullshit jobs in order to receive the funding. Who's going to oversee it? Who's to say that one job is important for one community, but not required for another? I imagine a situation where a team of jobs guarantee workers head to work and are told to go clean up the local park. But sir, we cleaned up the park yesterday. Well, do it again. Are we going to have hordes of workers doing the same monotonous jobs over and over again? And if so, what's the point? Why not just give everyone a paycheck and be done with it? Work for the sake of work is not very beneficial to society. One of the benefits that I mentioned before might turn out to be a problem. The jobs guarantee gives existing workers leverage when negotiating with their current employer. Some businesses will be able to match the government's terms, but others will simply not have the revenue to offer such benefits. Think of a small coffee shop in a small town. Will they be able to offer their staff the same benefits as the government's jobs guarantee? And if not, what will happen? 
At the minimum, they'd have to raise their coffee prices, potentially losing customers in the process and forcing them to shut down. The jobs guarantee may inadvertently end up having an adverse effect on small business. Another problem that I can think of is that the jobs guarantee could probably only offer unskilled labour. Communities couldn't expect medical professionals or computer programmers to be available in their pool of workers, so therefore could only offer jobs that require little skill. Cleaning, gardening, digging holes perhaps? But even many simple jobs require qualifications nowadays. Digging holes probably requires a ticket of some kind in order to avoid gas pipes and electrical cables. How will these unskilled labourers be supervised? There would have to be at least some skilled people employed by the local government in order to manage these teams of unskilled workers. Perhaps training could be part of the jobs guarantee, but this in itself might cause some issues. For example, you rock up in the morning to the local jobs program and the supervisor says, OK guys, today we'll need three volunteers to learn how to become librarians. There's a shortage in the region and by the end of it, you'll be fully qualified. Ten hands go up, but only three are selected. OK, for the rest of you, today we'll be cleaning the public toilets. Here's your mops, buckets and gloves. Obviously, lots of people would feel hard done by in this scenario. Who gets to do the training and who doesn't? Surely, we couldn't allow 50 people to train as librarians if the community only needs three. And lastly, there will probably be workers who simply can't do the work. At least, not effectively. Imagine an obese person who can't find a job due to his lack of skills and fitness, but is guaranteed a job under the program. What if he can't even bend over to do the gardening? What if he's not physically fit enough to dig a hole or clean up the park? Will he still get paid by just showing up? If so, who's enforcing how much work an individual must do in order to get paid? If others see that some workers are working less than others, but are still getting paid, then they might just start doing the same. To me, a jobs guarantee is just not that feasible. It's a nice idea, but there are just too many variables at play. Personally, I'd love the idea of knowing that if I'm a bit short on cash, I could just rock up to the local jobs guarantee program, work a couple of shifts, and get paid a decent wage. However, I also know that programs like these are notoriously mismanaged. There will be some communities where there are just not that many jobs that need doing. The local government will be forced to invent jobs to fulfil their jobs guarantee obligations. We'll end up with a whole bunch of people doing jobs that don't really need doing. There'll be some members of the community who are just not able or willing to put in a day's labour. Are they still entitled to a paycheck if they just show up? Who decides? Most participants will probably be unskilled, so a team of supervisors will have to be employed to make sure everything is done safely and efficiently, adding to the costs of the program. Will the costs end up outweighing the benefits of a jobs guarantee? Lots of participants will probably get assigned jobs that they don't really want to do. Cleaning toilets, painting walls, working out in the hot sun. However, they can't not work as they need the money, and they can't find a private job as they don't have the required skills. Many people will probably feel that they are being punished for being unemployed. To be fair, however, if managed correctly, a jobs guarantee could possibly work. But I just don't see it happening. I just don't think the government has the ability to oversee such a wide-reaching program without lots of issues cropping up. There'll be people who are incapable of work. There'll be lazy people who only put in the minimum amount of effort. There will be jobs created that just don't need doing. There'll be participants getting jealous of others who get assigned to the preferred roles. Nah, a jobs guarantee sounds good on paper, but will probably be cancelled after 12 months due to rising costs, inefficient management, and a large number of complaints from the people it's meant to be benefiting. It's not to say that we shouldn't try it, but we'll have to make sure that it's thoroughly planned and thought out before even attempting such a scheme.